Think about that, think about that. You're looking for your fulfillment in somebody else's house. Quit going trying to get other people keys and stuff to fulfill your life. When the word of God is enough all by itself. I'm not saying you're not supposed to love people, but you should not let people uh, be the fulfillment of your life. You ought to be able to tell people, I'm whole, I am well, I'm full of life, and I really don't need you in my life for fulfillment. Continue to preach, amen, a key to somebody's life. Uh huh. There's about 38 seconds left on the clock, and I praise God for you tuning in. And if you want the rest of the part of the of the message, I'm going to give you some more to go with that. Praise the Lord as I go. Praise the Lord. So, uh, he shall be your counselor. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. He's a counselor. Yeah. Christians ought to help. Christian. Believers ought to encourage believers. You have that authority and that ability. You ought not to be going to negative folk and people that don't know Christ and thinking they have an answer to your solution. Prayer has changed my life. Prayer will change your life. Prayer has changed our nation. When people get in trouble, prayer is the key, praise the Lord, to help us go through our life. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please praise God. So, uh, Isaiah goes on and said in verse 8, the Lord sent a word to Jacob and has lightened upon Israel. God will send you a word in due season. Uh -huh. You will get a word in due season. Like I said, I wanted to keep on talking about Christ and how wonderful he is. And I am going to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Praise the Lord. Yes, I am. In the uh, uh, St. Luke, I'm sorry, the first chapter in the 11th verse. St. Luke, the first chapter in verse 11. Mm -hmm. And they appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Let me tell you one thing. The Lord will help his folk. Uh -huh. Zechariah and Elizabeth, praise the Lord, in their old age, God gave them a key to life. In their old age, when they thought everything was shut down, God, amen, revived them again. I hope you are hearing me today. Faith and works will work together. For the scripture says, according to James, faith without works is dead. Praise the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, here is some people that is waiting for a word from the Lord. And God shows up when men have met his extremity and gave God his opportunity. So, we are finding here, praise the Lord, when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and, he fear, and fear fell upon him. He didn't know why the angel showed up, praise the Lord. So, he, he was fearful. 
Uh huh. Yes, and the angel popped up, and you saw an angel literally with your eyes in my brain, fear, amen, in your heart. Amen. It is not impossible. Uh, but the angel said unto him, fear not. Fear not. Calm yourself. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Zechariah. For thou prayer. Now listen to what the angel said. Thou prayer. <laughs> is her. Out of all of those years that gone by, all of a sudden God comes up, sees an angel from glory, praise the Lord, and I have my son and my daughters here, as well as a video man. Out of all that has gone on, my God, here years later, they're in the old age, and the Lord comes up and says, your prayer has been heard. If you think you have prayed a prayer and it has not come to fruition or, or you have not got a word from the Lord and a lot of time has gone by, never, hear me now, hear me well, hear me well, please don't pray prayers like you think God going to answer like a microwave oven. Don't compare your prayers with, I got to have it now, and it's a microwave oven. When you pray in that prayer and put it in God's hand, he will answer. Now listen, he will answer in due season. Maybe if God would answer some of your prayers, it might not have been a blessing to you, it might have been more of stress than a blessing because it was out of season. God will answer prayers in due season. Amen. Oh, I love that. I love that word. I love what the scripture says. He will answer prayer in your due season. And this is what happened um, unto the priest and, and, and to his wife. Praise the Lord, Elizabeth. Praise the Lord. And, and the Lord shot them both. And he said, not only did I answer your prayer, I'm going to tell you what, what name to call the baby. Uh-huh. Oh, I want you to call this child John. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. Don't, don't name him after none of your kinfolk. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, yeah, here's a word. Some of y'all are naming your children after some name you don't even know what they mean. Don't, don't name your children just anything. Think about it, mothers, young mothers and young fathers, what you're going to call your son or your daughter. Think about it. That name is going to follow them all of their life. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Give them a name that, that has some meaning to it. You just going to call them anything. Uh-huh. And be careful with no nickname. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Going in there pulling out some old crazy nickname. Now, verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. When you are a key to somebody's life, you bring joy, you bring peace, you bring love. And the scripture says right here plainly to the mother, the father, to family and friends. This child brought joy and couldn't even talk. This child couldn't carry on a conversation. But because the angel blessed him, his father wrote on a pad and said his name shall be called John. God loosed his tongue, amen, allowed him to speak and tell family and friends 
This is none other than John the Baptist, a key to the life of somebody else. Now, I'm going somewhere. Where are you going, Bishop? Well, I, t I started out talking about everybody is a key to somebody's life. Well, guess what? John the Baptist became a key to Christ's life. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, that's why I just couldn't cut that sermon off. Praise the Lord. I had to go a little further. John the Baptist, and guess what? They called him the forerunner. That's what they said. But he was a key that would unlock the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you never know when you're going to say a word or when you're going to uh, say something to somebody's life and it going to unlock their very life to success. Success comes through the Holy Spirit also. You know, I, I, I know we go to college and we take great courses and they help you to be successful in business. I don't have a problem with none of that. I'm just saying the Holy Spirit will help you be successful. Now, Bishop, where do you get that from? Well, I don't have time to preach about it, but if you read about when uh, Moses and Joshua transferred the mound of the Paton, the Lord God Jehovah says to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. And, and, and Joshua, I'm going to make sure you have good success. The Lord will help you be successful. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, he will help you have joy and peace in the midst of a storm. Now, I'm going just a little bit further. John the Baptist was a key to help Christ. And he said, when he baptized Christ, and they come up out of the waters and all of that, John said something that stunned all of Israel. He told them, Behold the Lamb of God. Uh -huh. What a powerful sermon. What a powerful word. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon you that you should be called the son and the daughters of God. I'm going to say this uh, 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 when I talk about you are key to somebody's life. Some people are what you call drainers. People, some people will drain you of all your spiritual strength. Every time you see them, they are wanting a word from the Lord. My son, my son, Henry, Dr. Dale Hunter is here. Uh, 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 Tanya Hunter Hurst is here. Emmanuel is a preacher. Amen. Both of them in their own right. But people will drain you. They were sitting home, lie, cheat, steal, cuss, fuss, and come to church and want you to spiritually put them on a platform of health and wealth. They will drain you of your strength. Let me tell you, you have people that are like leeches. Can I make it plain? A, a leech is no good but for one thing. When a leech get on you, and I have literally have had got leeches on me, uh huh, yes, when they latch on, it, their job is to see how much blood they can suck. 
Uh, they will latch on you and suck blood and, uh, and get fat. Now hear me, if you need that leech on you too much, they will swell up with your blood on them. And you have spiritual leeches in the church. They will latch on to you and all they want is what I can get out of you. They don't mean you ain't any good. I'm going to say something that will shock your mind and electrify your very toes and your feet. You got preachers that are leeches. Some preachers will never seek God for themselves. They are always looking for somebody else to give them a handout and never have nothing to give anybody else. I pause. That's going to stain you like a mama bee. That's going to float you like a butterfly. <laughs> Bishop Hunter, where did you get that from? Talking about the preachers are leeches, real ministers of God, but you're still a leech. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Okay, you ready. Christ had 12 apostles, disciples, 12 of them, working and training them. When he got ready to feed the multitude, who had anything to help him with? None of the 12 had anything. They didn't have a piece of bread. They were broke. Their treasure was broke. You ever meet broke preachers? Oh, 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 help me, Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. Always uh, scheming and making merchandise out of God's people. It's more about money than it is about the ministry. You better watch out. I'll preach on you. Uh-huh, making merchandise out of God's people. Christ didn't have nothing, so praise the Lord. A mother, a mother. Oh, I wish I knew that mother's name. Oh, and that little boy's name. All I have is a mother and a little boy. A mother had enough sense to tell her little boy, uh-huh, if you going to try to follow Jesus, you better carry a lunch with you. Can I preach in your house? He, the mother said, you better carry a lunch with you because you won't get hungry before you get back home. Uh -huh. And the little boy was following Jesus. Isn't it amazing? The mother did not go with the little boy. She had enough confidence that I want my son, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, to see Jesus. I'm going to close here in a little bit and I'm going to get my son to do the closing prayer for you. Praise the Lord. But listen, listen, listen. That little boy got a front row seat. Sometimes me and Sean or me and a child helps out. He squares. Now listen to me. He squares his way through the multitude. And got right up front so everybody could see him. Doesn't that sound like a child? Mm -hmm. Amen. He couldn't see over the top because he was too short. He couldn't see from the left to the right, but that was too wide. So he squares his way through the crowd and got right up front. And when Jesus needed some help, Y'all better hear me while I'm closing. When Jesus needed some help, the, the apostle in them was broke. They didn't have no money in the treasure. None of them brought any luck or bread. And guess what? They picked on that little boy. Y'all might not like my language. They picked on a little boy. They say, well, Jesus, uh, we, uh, here's a little boy. He, he, he had a, a sandwich and a lunch, but 
look at Jesus, but, but, but what is that among so many? No, that had nothing to do with that boy and girl. They didn't buy it. They wasn't their child. But they, oh, here's a little boy. But you know what Jesus did? It's kind of like he said, suffer little children to come unto me. And forbid them not. He looked at that little nut. He said, bring it to me. And he took that lunch and he looked up towards heaven and he blessed that lunch. He blessed it, set the people down in the 50s, which is an honorable number, amen, on the green grass or the green carpet, amen. And he told them and he passed out fish and bread, two fishes and five barley loaves. You are a key to somebody's life. The Lord took a lunch from a little boy. And that little boy was a key to multitudes having a meal to eat. What a powerful, what a powerful situation. What a powerful word. You never know how God is going to bless. And the Lord blessed that child. God never take anything and not give you more than what you gave. That little boy went home blessed. And he had a story to tell. And guess what his story was? Jesus took my lunch and fed a multitude. He was a key to somebody's life. God bless you. My son, Dr. Dale Hunter, is going to come and he's going to close out for us. Amen. We thank God for our pastor, our bishop, for preaching the word of God. You are the key to somebody's life. Don't give up just yet. Don't give in or throw in the towel just yet. You are the key to somebody's future. You are the key to somebody's life. Our bishop has poured out his heart to us. We thank God for you tuning in week after week. Amen, to be part of this broadcast. I want to pray for you in your house. I want to pray for you where you are. I want to pray that you don't throw away your key. I, I have a, a whole stack of keys and sometimes they weigh me down. I be leaning to one side, I have so many keys on them. And you know what my mechanic said? He said, throw away some of those keys because you don't need all them keys in your ignition, it's weighing it down. And I refuse to throw the keys away. Some of them, I forgot what they belong to. But I refuse to throw the key away. The minute I throw the key away, Tanya, it will be the key that I need. <laughs> I just feel like I don't want to throw away the key that is to important to someone's life. Father, I want to pray for these like people. I pray for them out in the audience, out in TV land, out in broadcast, in the broadcast area, Lord, that you will touch them in their homes, that you will touch them where they are. I pray for them, I pray for their mind, that you would let the mind of Christ be in them. Let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I pray that you give them the vigor and the tenacity, Lord, to stand and withstand, to hold on for just a little while longer. Uh, somebody is about to give up and throw in the proverbial towel. I pray for them today. I pray that you would strengthen them under the sound of my weak voice. I pray for that mother, that grandmother who's praying for that wayward child. I set myself in agreement with them and I pray that you bring that child home before it's too late, Lord. I pray for that sinner that's closest to hell today. I pray that you would bring them to the understanding that you are God and besides you there is no other. I pray, Lord, I pray for the church today because you said, Daryl, when you pray, 
pray especially for the household of faith. So I pray for your people today, Lord, every Christian, every believer, that you would strengthen them in their homes. Some cannot come out, Lord, but they feel content with watching you over the broadcast and telecast. I pray that you would meet them where they are. Someone needs healing, touch them. Someone needs saving, save them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, it is my duty to pray. I pray, Lord, now that you will restore back to our bishop as such that he has given out, Lord. The same virtue that he spent and gave to others, I pray you will restore it back unto him in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you the glory. We thank you for our church, our home church, and our church family, God. And I pray that you build a fence all around them, protect each one of them, under the sound of my weak voice and whatsoever is accomplished we will give your name the glory we give your name the praise in Jesus name amen and amen